Hello and welcome to The Real Sex Education. I'm Digby Waite and I'm joined as always by accredited sex and relationship therapist Kate Campbell. Hello, Mum. Hello, Diggs. I think that was terrible, wasn't it? Do, do, do I enunciate at all? No. Okay, but people still understand what I'm trying to say, right? Dinner. Okay. Last week on the podcast, we spoke about sexting and nudes. Mum, Last we? week. Last week. Yes, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. Last week, mother, we spoke about sexting and nudes on the sexting. podcast. Well, You've developed the, lisp. I have, but it's the only way that I can enunciate. I sort of feel like this is the voice I must do to, to enunciate. Is that not working for you? Wow. This is, so we received a text. Um, we, I received a message today that said um, oh, we something. Again. Well, no, something to the effect, because I sent this to mum. Someone sent me something saying um, I'd pay... Uh, a, a level up in subscription for my Patreon if I could get the same podcast but with one of the hosts edited out and they said they just want the podcast but with me edited out so it's just you Mel and I feel ma maybe this is why this sort of thing they just want me gone okay they wouldn't be and the same then would it it wouldn't be no, it wouldn't it would be, be at better. all the same it would be, no, it would be better but it wouldn't would it it would be awful well uh, do you know what would, it would be awful because of your bloody banging of that microphone I can hear it moving. Are you moving it as we speak? <laughs> yeah, I can, what? Don't play with that. Don't play with it. It it's makes... Oh, God. Especially with these bad boys in these cans. Right, are you are you behaving now? Should we start? <laughs> <laughs> because last week, on, last week on the podcast... Last um, week. We, I tried to talk to you and, and give you some reasons as to why one should sext and send nudes, right? And you weren't having it. And you kept talking about cheating and infidelity... So I thought, right, let's just... I would just stop you and remind you what happened to Otis. Well, I don't know. Uh, on but, but... Sex Education, the series. The television programme. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Talk to me. What, what happened? Well, he... Is this a spoiler? We, should we say spoiler yeah, we alert? Yeah, be we better not. But if you want to see Otis's Willie on Sex Education, tune in now. <laughs> <laughs> That was we, a public service broadcast. Yeah, that was brilliant. That sounded like that sounded like when you ring up that that number to tell you what ti the time is, and they're mm. like, "It is eight forty one, now, on the third beat or whatever." You know, beep. Um, yeah. Beep. And you're like, "If you'd like to see Otis Milburn's Willie, tune in now." Mm. God, we're, we're both enunciating really well. So he he accidentally shared it with many people. Oh dear. Oh, and this is what idea. happens when you take dick pics, dear listener. Exactly, exactly. Your uh, your aubergine gets all over the shop. Um, but let's let's uh, let's let's move on because otherwise, I can tell I've written so many questions for you for this episode that we we should get, just get straight into it because I feel like maybe that was a bit of a primer. In fact, maybe this might be a primer for that episode as well. So go back and listen to the sexting and nuding one, nuding one if you haven't already. Is that sexting is that and bad? nuding? Sexting yeah. and nuding. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so so let's just get straight into it. Mum, what's the definition of cheating? I sometimes feel like it's good to start with this sort of question. I would love to know. Interesting. Because I do you think it that? varies from person to person, doesn't it? Depends what your rules are. Mm, okay, this is very interesting already. So mm. most people would think, oh, cheating is when, let's say, you're going out with someone or you're married to someone and they shag someone else, right? Or something to that effect. They kiss someone else, you've cheated on them. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. And why not? No, because now we have other things that you can do which are considered cheating, like sexting. Maybe some people think isn't as bad as having full-on sex with someone but maybe maybe it is if it's been going on long enough that sort of thing i mean there's such a thing as micro cheating and emotional cheating would you put sexting under micro cheating or or again or it depends on what you find really objectionable doesn't it in your own relationship mm. lots of people nowadays find emotional relationships much worse than sexual ones Mm. From their point of view, they would rather you just went off for a shag than you, you went off and, and fell in love or shared intimate details. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's interesting. So, so we're talking about some of the, the, the micro cheating is like things. That, so it's not full on like getting with other people. But, you know, people say that 
Um, maybe if you flirt too much with people, that could be it. Um, you know, liking an attractive person's social media profile or constantly looking up, that sort of thing. But the emotional cheating side is very interesting. That's like you say, creating that emotional bond with someone else that isn't your partner. I know um, someone um, and him and his partner they are in a sort of open relationship but it's like a don't ask don't tell policy right it's like go away and do what you want to do and i don't mind but like you say it's purely sexual they're like if 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 i come home and i find you watching our favorite tv show with someone sat on the sofa i will scream and Ooh, that is cheating that's proper whereas, cheating. whereas if you are just like oh i'm going to be out on thursday night and i'm not coming home until the next day i know what's going on but as long as you're not doing the like cooking dinner together and all that sort of stuff then then that's fine this is what sort of what i think you're talking about right mm. yeah people not minding that stuff as much well some do and some don't don't they and yeah. it's it's really it's really fascinating what people arrange between themselves but more to the point most people don't have any conversations about this and so something happens and then they're shocked and horrified and you and you're thinking well why didn't you have that discussion at some point? Why? How did? How did your partner know? Because things like flirting have traditionally always been a sign of a stable relationship. So if you can say go to a party and you both have a bit of a little flirt, but you mm -hmm. go home together, that's that's nice. It just it just demonstrates your commitment to one another and your ability to flirt safely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm. again, uh, a friend of mine she told me that. She was at a party and her boyfriend was there and they were both chatting to people. And I think maybe this someone else was flirting with her boyfriend a bit or maybe he was chatting to them a bit in that evening. Anyway, my friend and her boyfriend go home together. They're lying in bed and she was like, oh, by the way, you know, when I saw you with that girl tonight, it made me really jealous. And he was like, oh, my God, I'm really, really sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't mean to make you jealous. And she was like, no, 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 I don't mean, I don't, I'm not angry at you. I'm, I'm trying to have, have sex with you. It's hot. I, 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 you know, I liked it. So that for her, that like maybe it was like a level of micro cheating or whatever you want to call it. Um, but actually it was like, you know, that was a, it was a good thing. She, that was something she would absolutely tolerate. And if anything, you know, that might be even seen as a positive thing. Mm. So it, it is true. So, so this is really interesting. So you think that the couples should talk about these sorts of things things that might happen before they do ha and, and and basically say what's on and what isn't so so what how, what does that conversation look like well sometimes people actually come to therapy saying we've decided we want to make we want to make this relationship work so what do we need to do and then they have those conversations in therapy which is which is great but there are loads and loads of articles and things and posts around how you discuss the, the the important rules of the relationship. So I don't think anyone's got any excuse these days for not having those conversations, really. But except that they don't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I mean, it might seem silly and mad, but I because I think a lot of people will go, well, obviously that's cheating, and obviously that isn't. But like I just gave that example, some things some people would find inexcusable, and other things they wouldn't. What I would recommend is there is a book here called um, Sex and Intimacy uh, by Kate Campbell. Um, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful writer. In there, there is a whole, there's many pages on infidelity, otherwise known as cheating. Um, and in, in fact, there is some questions that you can ask your partner, um, some certain scenarios. So, um, and examples of what could be seen as cheating. Um, so you could get that book and take a look in there. I mean, let's give, let's give an example of, of, of some of them that are in the book. Um, having a friend of the gender and sexuality that interests you, even if you don't have sex with them. Is watching porn cheating? Is having cyber sex with a stranger cheating? Is subscribing to an OnlyFans model cheating? Starting a relationship with an avatar in a video game? I know that's going to be a problem for a lot of people currently playing a game called Baldur's Gate 3. Everyone's talking about um, shagging all the characters in that. Oh, your face um, lit up then. Yes, it did. I can't wait to get it. I'm going to ask for it for Christmas, so prep yourself <laughs> for that. Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, um, Santa. Well, you know what, actually, again, I, I know I keep talking about, um, about anecdotes. So what do you think of this? Do you think this is cheating? Um, there was a post that was going around online, this is probably a year ago now, where someone had discovered, that their, their girlfriend loved playing The Sims, right? You know, where you create little um, characters, Sims who go around and they have a house and stuff. You she know what I used to do? I, I always used to have, fill up the swimming pool to the brim and take all the all the <laughs> stairs all, out. All the ladders away. Yeah, so they'd drown and then there'd be ghosts floating over the swimming pool. That's true. I, Everyone I did mean, that, didn't they? 
They did, they did. Yeah. That is a classic. I mean, you are insane, but it is a classic. And I, you wonder where I get it from. And do you remember Theme Hospital taking out all the loos? I, so all the patients had to, I did. So patients had to wee on the floor. Oh, God. People who know that. Theme Hospital will think that will love that. Yes. And they, yeah, what a crazy game as well, where people would like heads would expand. Oh, bloody get heads. Head. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe that you used to play video games. With you. I don't actually remember us sitting down and playing these games together. No, we didn't. I just used to do the bloaty head and <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. make them wee on the floor and things. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. And it was, yeah, it was on your computer that we played them all. Yeah. Um, Anyway, just basically, this girl had created, was played The Sims all the time, and her boyfriend discovered that she had a house in the game and an avatar that looked like her and an avatar that looked like her ex boyfriend. <gasps> yeah, and they were living in a house together and they had kids. Was this and his that- imagination? Or had she put the avatar in before? In the past. Well, that's it. And then what you... Because a lot of people were saying this and they were thinking... No, but it looked like she had definitely been playing this... According to the story, she... It was like that save had been... Or that autosave or whatever had been going on. It was quite quite recent. But the thing is, let's say she'd made that save that she really liked when her and her ex-partner were together. Hmm. You'd want to keep that story... You wouldn't want to just delete all that. No. Maybe you would. But you'd be like, oh, I've made so much progress. But it might be a bit weird. I mean... Yeah. Hmm. It, let, Could you hey, change the appearance of the avatar? I don't think you can that that easily okay. on The Sims. Yeah. But um but it's interesting though, isn't it? Very, very interesting. I don't know if whether you think that is cheating or not. <gasps> Maybe that's this is now the time to ask in the comments below. So if you're on Spotify, we'll do a poll. On Instagram we'll do a poll, all that sort of stuff. On on the YouTube, please get in contact. Let us know. Is that Sims story cheating or not? Because that is, I think that's Do we ever crazy. get the results of these polls you should do all the time? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, the one for the the um, Coronation Street one, you know, the, the oh, song on Coronation Street yeah. who's putting stuff on a website like OnlyFans. Mm. And it's, is it empowering or not? That mm. is currently, the last time I checked, sat at 100% for yes, it is empowering. OnlyFans <gasps> can be empowering. Oh. Yeah. Well, so should, we tell, should we tell the right script writers just in case they go off? In the wrong yeah. direction. Yeah, we probably should. And so yeah. uh, th- we've done a very, very big poll of which up to two people have responded <laughs> to. And they they think that it's empowering. So make sure you don't mess this one up. Yeah. Um, we absolutely should do is, that. Is You're those to right. us? Listen, Mum, I don't, I don't think we should talk about the ins and outs of the podcast. Um, you know, just we, do, we don't want to let people too, too far behind the curtain. Okay, um, why do people cheat in relationships oh is that a question to me what who the fuck else am i talking to <laughs> yeah in the way you approached it i thought you were going to answer it oh no i, for- I forgot to say I-, I should probably stop talking as much remember people don't want me in this podcast they want you <laughs> so so when I ask a question, so I, sometimes it might be rhetorical, but in this episode, it's not going to be rhetorical. So, so what, what were some of the reasons? Well, there are loads. I mean, sometimes it's an exit affair to get out of the relationship. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people just, you know, just don't see any problem with having lots of relationships and um, moving from one person to another all the time. And, you know, having several people on the go at once, not a problem for them. And they haven't had that conversation, presumably, with their partners, or they might have done and just not care anyway. Um, mm. There are, you know, they just like sex, and they, and often it makes people feel really empowered to have somebody interested in them and to prove it by having sex with them. So that that makes them feel better about themselves. A very common thing for men is to often have a problem with their with their primary relationship and to confide in somebody else. Some often someone at work. And then the person they confide in kind of pushes the relationship a bit further um, Mm. so that and then they feel kind of obligated to take it further because this person's sort of saying, well, you've confided in me now and I know all this stuff and, you know, you're not going to dump me now. And then they feel, oh, I've used this person. This will be bad. So they end up in an affair, which they didn't really mean to have. And then, oh wow, yeah, and that is really, really common, incredibly wow. common. 
I can't yeah. be. I, I just can't be that. That's that sounds quite specific, but it's so common. That's crazy. It is very common, and the thing is that people who do it, they're finding themselves in this situation where they, where they've upset everybody. So they're mm. typically people who fi- who are scared of talking to their partner about stuff, and particularly about problems in the relationship. So they go outside the relationship to talk about it, and then they end up in a worse situation where mm. they've got another mm. person now that they can't talk to. And you can't really go back to your wife and go, oh, and by the way, I'm having this affair and I just don't know how to handle this woman. So that's difficult. Oh but but generally speaking, there could be as many reasons. I mean, just for some people, just opportunity. It's just flattering and they yeah. can, so they, so they do. Sometimes people think, oh, I haven't had enough experience. And they will go off and um, do things with somebody else to get the experience that they want to bring back into the primary relationship. They they actually doing it to to sort of service the primary relationship. Yeah, I've I've heard about. I know people who. To be fair, I don't think anyone's cheated on anyone else, but I think it's, it's been grounds for like why people have broken up, where they've gone, oh well, I've never had that time in my twenties where I just had loads of sex and stuff, and usually like, like they'll break up with their partner and then do that for like a month. Yeah. If if not less, realize it's not all it's cracked up to be, and then get back together with the same person. Yeah, I, mean, I guess happen. not cheating, but but yeah, exactly. But it but it sounds like similar thing where it's that that thing where people feel like they've just lost out on something if they haven't done. Well, that. there is that, but there's also that rather old fashioned thing of people saying, "Well, you know, oh, I don't think I'm very good at sex. I'll get some more experience with somebody else." And then, In, and then, which if you said that. If if a partner said that to you, like, I only had sex with her so I could be better at sex with you. And but people say that. And do you believe they genuinely believe that? Yeah. Wow. That's I think amazing. some people do I do think some people do. I think that's going out of style a bit now. But right. yeah, that yeah, yeah. was a thing once. And one big reason, of course, is that people are afraid of being found out. So not being found out that they're having an affair, but being found out that they're not the person they appear to be. Or they're afraid of being rejected or abandoned. So they keep more partners around. So that reduces the intimacy with the one that they really like the most. And it also means that if the one they like the most does dump them, they've got a spare around. God, a spare. So not many reasons, really. <laughs> with that in mind, I rewatched Esther Perel's. Um incredible ted talk where she talks about infidelity mm. um she's a bit what i mean what do we call her a big therapist big counselor big yeah you know, big, she's big, a, big therapist big therapist she's a very petite know. woman <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but you know i'm sorry i'm talking figuratively big you know yeah um yeah she is she has yeah, a she's huge a big, following yeah exactly um and honestly it's great so do go away and watch that because it's amazing and i guess that that's what i want to talk about as well is that Often what she finds in her therapy is this affair um, and this infidelity isn't about the other person. It's not about the woman that you got with or anything. Like that. It's about you. And it's, and you've done this for you. There's something about you that you've done. You're trying to recapture something. Maybe things have gone stale in your relationship, whatever. This isn't about, oh, just someone else is better than your current partner. It's because something in you. you and so that's what we're talking about. And she says, you know, the things that you should do is is not ask those questions, you know, um, how many times did you have sex? Where did you do mm. it? What did you do? The question you should be asking is, what was she replacing? What does she represent? Why did you, you know, those sorts of things. And I, and I guess that will lead you to, to what was the reasons this happened and how you can and, and put, put those right, I guess, going forward. Yeah, so um, lost youth and things like that. Yeah, and people yeah. so often miss, miss one another. They don't, they, they dismiss their partner's the partner reaching out so one partner may say i feel really old and unattractive and they the other one says don't be ridiculous and that's all they get so they've mm. completely dropped the ball there because this you know some someone's complaining about something very very serious and intimate and yeah. they and they they just say don't be silly and then mm. wonder why they're talking to someone else about that or doing something else which which replaces you know, makes makes them feel young and attractive again, and and wanted and worthwhile. Yeah, and and properly engaging what your partner has to say. I mean, what was what was that thing? You you might be able to tell me this, but there's that thing going around on the internet at the moment as well. It's sort of getting popularised again. But it was that some relationship 
analyst or something basically identified you know the reason why 95% of couples break up and it was because he analyzed all these couples at some B&B or something and said that the is one thing John they all John Gottman I think this is this is the Gottmeister and is this where he, and he said basically at some B&B I, I don't well, listen we uh, might have to talk uh, what are you pissed off what is, what was it yeah, then it's just so funny because he he had these flats with cameras in that he where oh, right. the, the, they'd install the couple in the flat <laughs> And then yeah. they, apartments, because it was American. Right, no, no, no. Apartments, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> this B and B, and they um, and then they watched them, and they watched their behaviour, and then they extrapolated from their behaviour what he called the four horsemen of the apocalypse. That's it. Yes, it is. This is the same thing. Mm. And so one of those horsemen, or basically, he was like this. This thing is when when the couple goes, when one of them goes, oh look at look out, and, and you, this will trigger you. Mm. Look out there. There's a bird in the garden. And the other one goes, mm, and doesn't look up. Yeah. And doesn't engage. Yeah. It's like, um, that is when that is when the relationship is going to start to fall down. Whereas uh, th- yeah. what they're doing there, your partner going, look out there, a bird in the garden. They are reaching their hand out and they are saying, here is an olive branch. Like, hold on to it with me. I, I, I want to I connect with you over this. And if you just go, yeah, yeah, then that won't be very good. Mm. And that's why now I have to apologize to you, man, because the number of times you've burst into my room in the morning and then, and be like, come on, time to wake up. And then gone, look at a bird in the garden. And um, I've just sort of moaned. Yeah, well, that's typical, isn't it? Also, what was nice during that is, just to prove my point, mum was on her phone the entire time. Yep. <laughs> Right, I'm going to tell you what the four horsemen are. Oh, okay, we looked it up. Yeah. Oh, that's what this was. <laughs> Here we go. Also, I was quite enjoying ignoring you, but for effect, for comic effect. Yeah. All right, okay, now he's ignoring me. Stonewalling. Yeah, is that is what this one is? Of the, <laughs> um, <laughs> criticism, contempt and defensiveness. I mean, it, to to avoid an affair, I guess you do want to you do want to not engage with the the four horsemen and to think about. I mean, just think about in general how much attention you're paying to your partner and their behaviour and whether they're constantly making bids for attention that you're rejecting because mm. then you can't really complain if if they sort of find other interests and whether that turns out to be golf. Or, yeah. you know, or, you know, they get a dog or something or whether they, you know, they become married to their work or they have a little affair. Yeah, you can't really complain. You can't really <laughs> well, complain. you could, really. But, <laughs> no, you no, know. no, you heard it here first. You <laughs> oh, can't dear, complain. <laughs> well, you know, you, you should, you know, no, it would no, help I'm if being... you paid a bit more attention to the relationship. Is cheating the end? Because I think I think for a lot of people that I know, people just go, okay, well, if anyone's cheating in a relationship, you have to just absolutely get rid of them and sack them off straight away. Uh, if there's any inkling of anything like that, then the relationship is over. And and it's what and everyone would tell that to their friends as well. If their friend has anything like that happen to them, they're like, well, you've got to get rid of him, like or get rid of them. You know, it's over. Is that is that always the case? Is it that cut and dry? No. Of course not. And one of the things that's so that's so difficult about this sort of situation is that when you're talking to your friends, you'll have these conversations over a glass of wine where you say, well, if my partner ever did anything like that, they'd be out the door. Mm. And you say that, but when it actually happens to you, you might feel differently. And some people who say, no, 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 don't be so silly. I would, you know, I'd, I'd give them a chance to explain themselves. And sometimes affairs save a relationship. And I would, you know, I would be very grown up about it. When it happens to them, they go, you're gone. And they cut mm. up their socks and things like that. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and all of that sort of thing. And they, they really can't bear it. But But often people that thought they would be very angry are very angry and hurt, but they don't want to lose that person. Mm. But the problem then is, how do they manage that around family and friends who've heard the story that they would always throw somebody out? And then will the family and friends be angry with the partner and it will ruin their relationship and their nights out and Christmas and all of that sort of thing? So what that does is put that person into a sort of isolation tube where they can't tell anybody anything because they're afraid of ruining the relationship with their partner. And wow. and then they don't and they don't know how to manage it. So they end up doing really, really silly things like insisting that their partner tell tell them exactly what they did 
And they go on and on and on and on and on and on and on saying there's more, isn't there? You're keeping something back. And that ruins the relationship because while I thought we were really happy, you were having this affair. And then the other partner saying, but I wasn't thinking about you at all. And I was like, you weren't thinking about me. You know, you can imagine <laughs> what that's like. So yeah. it's really hard. There's no template for how you're going to behave after an affair. And so you, you, you don't know what to do or how to do it. And it, it, it's so, so difficult to, to stop asking those questions. And once you've heard things, you can't unhear them again. Yeah. So, just, so is this like how many times did you do it? And oh, where what did you did do you it? Do? How where did you... did you do it? How much did you enjoy it? On a scale of naught to ten, was it was she better than me? Was he was was he harder than me? What you know? Oh, you did that with him, did you? You won't do that with me. All of that. Mm. And then then you have to try and live with that. And then sometimes it's that's not possible. So actually what ends the relationship is the way you deal with it afterwards, not not the infidelity itself. Mm, I like that. And so, so you'd say, like, okay, let's say I've been cheated on. <laughs> um, let's, I'm, just, I'm just getting into character. <laughs> um, that's how I cry. <laughs> um, Don't mock poor people what? who've been cheated. But I'm not mocking oh. them. I'm just, I'm uh, sorry. This is how I act. A few, a few episodes ago, you said, "Oh, that was really good. You're a good actor." And I said, "Okay, I'll start acting more then." And I'm giving you my best cry. And now you're being anyway. You're putting me off. Let me get back into character. Okay. Better. Mm. Um. So I've just been I've just been cheated on. I want. I obviously want to ask my partner now all these questions like, where were you? How did he do it? Was he harder than me? All that sort of stuff. What should I be doing instead? What should you do? Or or because I know you said you might react differently, but it, it, is there some good things you could do in the wake of someone cheating on you? Well, yeah, give yourself some time and space. Right afterwards, people might feel that they can't bear to have the partner around. And so they say, you go away, give me a moment to just recover from the shock. And mm. they may not be best in one another's company at that point. But if they if they do actually want to continue the relationship, then they need to give it some time and space. So I guess ways of making that time and space are really important and to have some rules around that time and space. So particularly not to talk endlessly about what happened or what's going to happen in the future, but just to to ring fence certain times for that. So you might say no more than an hour a day talking or no more mm. than half an hour a day talking. Often people have a lot of sex after an affair they they feel very, very close. They have loads of sex and it's really, really good. And they think, OK, we can do this. And then suddenly they don't want to do it anymore or one of them can't do it anymore. And they just say, no, 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 don't don't want to touch you. That's normal. That's normal after an affair. That happens to a lot of people. And then they go back into a kind of phase of getting to know one another again. That can happen, that whole whole process in the mm -hmm. space of days, or it might be months or years even that that goes on for. And sometimes people do manage to, you know, they make a decision to keep going. One of the big mistakes people make is to insist on forgiveness because mm. often that isn't possible or it's not possible now. And you don't have to forgive. You can say, this was a dreadful thing that happened. I can't forgive it. It's really hurt me, but I'm choosing to give this another crack. That's much more healthy in the long run than saying, OK, I'm going to forgive you, but not really forgiving and really, really resenting and asking loads of questions. And actually, because you don't feel that because you've forgiven that the partner really understands how awful it's been, what you do is keep on being horrible to them and asking them questions and telling them how bad you feel and how awful they've been. And that actually damages the relationship. So in the end, the partner may say, look, I really wanted to give this a go, but I can't, I can't do this anymore. So, so then if, if you do want to stay in that scenario you've given, how, how do you rebuild? What, what do you do next? Well, so, so don't talk about it all the time. One of the things that a lot of therapists recommend, and it's in a lot of sort of textbooks and things, is mm. to behave as though, if you can, behave as though you you it's all fine because mm. if you want the relationship to be fine at some point 
you are going to have to deal with that. You're going to have to deal with it being fine and you both behaving as if it's fine without mm. constantly referring to it and going back to it. So sometimes people do that for as long as they can. Sometimes people can't manage more than five minutes or a minute. But, you know, try, you know, if you were seeing your therapist weekly, they'd probably say, try and do it for this week. Try and do it till the next session. And sometimes people come back and they say, actually, that was all right. We can do that. And now yeah, we're doing yeah. it. So it's behaving as if it's better. And then you can still have your times. I mean, you should, in any case, in a relationship, be checking in with one another regularly and having, you know, times when you talk about how things are going, reviewing things. So yeah. you just, you, that's more important. What can you do? What do you, what, when looking back, what do you think allowed this to happen? Yeah. How can you yeah. stop that from happening? Because people come to therapy saying, I just want it to be the way it was. No, you don't. That's exactly yes. what you don't want. Because whatever it was before allowed this to happen. Exactly. You know? So you want to yeah. change it and you want to give more time to the relationship, to have more time for what you want. And it may be that you need more individual time, that the re relationship was stifling and that you need a bit more time to yourselves or you need more time as a family or both of you need to work less, you need to have more holidays if you can afford them. You need to, to spend more time together. I mean, a walk in the park. You know, um, mm. you know, sitting sitting down and watching a movie together. So those are things that some people never do. Some people never eat together. That yeah, blows my yeah. mind. I can't believe that they don't eat together. That that's extraordinary. So you you know, but making yourselves feel more like a couple and working out what does make you feel like a couple, what makes you feel intimate, what has mm. happened to the sex? Do you need some help with that? Do you need some help with sex therapy? What's going to make it? better what's going to what for you is your idea of a relationship you know sometimes you can write down what you expected from a relationship both of you and look and compare those things and then say well what does that mean to us because some, someone says i was expecting love and companionship what so what love and companionship means to me may not be what love and companionship means to you so mm -hmm. working those things out is quite important and just getting just you know letting letting it happen oh, i love this man this is great because you know I, I always said with this podcast we wanted to make it educational but also one of those things that you can go with practical advice so avoid the four horsemen of the apocalypse mm -hmm. and go home and talk to your partner about what you think cheating is but also do what mm. mum said as well and say what you want out of a relationship mm. love and companionship sure but what does that look like mm. maybe it needs to be like a like a spider diagram what's the, one of those ones where it's like like relationship in the middle and then the, the things you put love as a, a little thing off but then what what does that mean so then little branches off that as well mm. crikey wow. that is a that is great. And that way you will never, ever, ever be cheated on ever again. Oh, listen, guys, if you do do one of those diagrams with all that <gasps> stuff about what you do in your relationship, do yes. let us have a look. Oh, can let we, us have a look. Can we put it on the show page? You know, yeah, that would absolutely. be good. Or if it's just for our eyes, then that's absolutely fine. We'd be fascinated to see it anyway. That works for us. Mm. That works for us. Yeah. Oh, my God. What great fan art. You know, other yeah, this is our version of, of fan art. I love it. Please, do, someone. Do you know send what's quite fun to do as well? You know, if you've got a little box of farm animals, or what I prefer is little action figures, not all you know things that you know like the things you get for children to play with, like a nurse, a doctor, a fireman, a policeman, a little monster, a genie. You know, all of those things, and get toys. them all up. Yeah, yeah, toys. Yeah, but little yeah. figures, right? Like yeah, Bert okay, Nerny, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, big yeah. bird. Um, so you've got all these figures, and then you say what, which one your partner is, oh, okay. or which ones and why. Which one are you? Which one are they? Which one are the children? What's your mum? What's your mum-in-law? And you just talk, and it, it's a really fun way of talking about what works and doesn't work between you, and noticing people's behaviour and their funny little ways and their needs particularly mm -hmm. and sometimes people can make one person consist of several different toys and that that is a really cracking game i think because so just to say in mum's study where clients would come there's a big box of toys in there big and box. not the ones you think the ones <laughs> we've just been talking about and yeah like you say filled with burton early and all that sort of stuff all my toys were going missing when i was a kid and that's where they ended up they were my toys there. you stole them in 
<laughs> they were Santa gave them you to me. You took my gorilla. Excuse me, you used to go off with my King Kong. Yeah, what the one with the red button in the middle? You press it, you went. Yeah, again, its eyes went red. Is that yours? When yes. I was a child, I had to play with toys, not have them all used by your stinky clients. Being like, oh, my husband my reminds me of King Kong. He's a not big stinky. bastard. My Sorry. clients. Are, I'm, apologies to my clients, all of you, everywhere, wherever you are. My poor I apologize clients. To your, Sorry, I apologize guys. to your clients. Sorry, guys. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Do let us know what you think. Um, can cheating be forgiven? Or what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. No, we're going we're gonna to say, can, let us know if you think cheating can be forgiven. But also let us know, would you forgive your partner if they had a, a house in The Sims with an ex-partner of theirs and children that they've been playing for years? Let us know. Uh, as I say, the <laughs> poll will be on our Instagram. And the actual episode on Spotify has the ability to do like a poll thing. So so do do check that out. Obviously, on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter, we are at the RSC pod. Twitter? And on, sorry, X, for we know as Twitter. Ugh, you love Elon Musk, don't you? I bet you love him. I've, I've seen some of his, some of his um, big space rockets in the flesh. Excuse me. I have. Have you actually? Yeah. Mm, we'll talk about that off air. Yeah, I went to NASA, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, that kind of space rocket. Okay. Mm. And on Monday, we'll have uh, we'll answer some of the questions you sent into us on our Google form, which, as I say, can be found on the social media channels. We just mentioned all them. We're at the RSC Pod. And by the way, you can also uh, email us as well. We are podcasts at hatchy dot com. Subscribe to us wherever you listen to this now, and we'll see you next time for some more real sex education. Bye. Bye. <laughs>